today we're going to start our video series um, and I thought about how I'm going to do it so I decided well I'm going to start with the basics first because that's kind of what this video is about teaching somebody how to do sheet metal work in the field so we're going to start off with uh, putting the filter rack in attaching the drop duck and uh, that kind of thing and just working our way out now some of this is going to be boring to some people and, and and if it is, I truly ask for your support. And if if it's boring to you and you know it, but you want to support the series, just uh, turn a video on, let it play, go do something else, and come back. Um, <laughs> hate to ask that, but uh, you know it will help support. Uh, what we're looking at the side of a scratch and dent rain furnace that I picked up today, because. Um, I just didn't want to use the old furnace, so this is a new one. It's scratch and dent. Uh, it doesn't have a blower housing in it, so we're going to start at the very beginning. So as you see, the manufacturer has left these little notches on the side of the furnace. There's one right there, one over there, uh, one in the back corner, and one in the back bottom corner. So what you do first, <clears throat> as you see that screw there, that is a uh, a plate that holds the insulation in place so we got to unscrew that and since our electric is on this side we're going to disconnect that we'll move it to the other side in a bit or we may just let it hang because this is just a sheet metal series it's not about how to install the furnace um, even though 90 percent of it is sheet metal work. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my handy dandy S-lock because I use it for everything and I'm going to draw a line from, from this point here to that point there. Then I'm going to draw a line from up there down to the bottom corner and then all the way over to this other corner. So let me get that done and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll, we'll get to cutting because you see I got my unit bit ready. I got my uh, quarter inch chuck over there and I got my nibblers and we're going to get this furnace uh, the side of it cut out and we're going to put the filter rack in then we'll put the drop duct together and go from there So we pulled the bottom of the, the insulation off, just so it wouldn't be in my way.
so there is the side of the furnace cut off. <clears throat> kind of messy there, but that's alright. Once we get it all together, it'll look good. Um, This side of the furnace was dimmed up, so I had to kind of straighten it out while it goes. Alright, so here is our filter rack. And um, if you notice, it's 16 by 25, and that's pretty much the standard size. Uh, so what you do is you just lay it on there like that, make sure it's lined up, it's flush, and then um, uh, this side over here on the inside is flush. And then after we get it all screwed in, we can go back and and pull all this insulation out from inside the lower compartment so it doesn't get sucked up inside the blower wheel and start making an awful racket. Let me get my screws and my drill, my little impact Makita there, uh, get it, and we'll get this thing screwed onto the furnace. <clears throat> all right, so we got a, we're ready to screw this to it. So that's what we're going to do. That one gave me a hard time, but um, that's all right. After we get past this first row, it won't give us any, any more of a hard time. drilling into the uh, housing the divider there so it's going into like two pieces of metal and uh, that's all right So we got the filter rack on, on the furnace. Now, what you could do is take some foam tape and, um, and before you put the filter rack on, put the foam tape on the furnace, set the filter rack down on top of it, and you'd have an airtight seal. But generally what everybody does is just tape it uh, with silver tape, foil tape, and seal it up with mastic. Um, I'm not going to do that on this video. I'm not going to seal anything up just because I am going to take things apart and do different things with them um, throughout this series. So there's going to be no taping or sealing or mastic or anything like that just because I don't want to have to break through it all. And um, uh, But that is that's how you put it in a filter rack. 